Hey guys, are you an Android power user, but you hate installing third party apps to do things like copying files from your PC to your phone and taking screenshots or screen recordings to transfer to your computer? There's no need for you to install any app to do this because in this video, I'm going to show you how to use ADB, which is short for Android Debug Bridge. And what this does is it lets you run simple commands on your Android using your computer. And the best part about this, you don't need to be a developer. And so for this video, we'll be going over how you can transfer files between your Android and PC, take a screenshot or recording on your phone and immediately send them to your computer. So if you want to follow along, Let's get started by navigating to developer.android.com. At the top, you'll find a search bar. Let's use that and search for platform tools and then click on the entry that has SDK platform tools. You'll land on a page that has download options for several different platforms. And this includes Windows, Mac and Linux. But for this video, I'll be using a Windows PC. So let's click on the right platform and you'll need to accept the agreement. Once you do, click the download button for your platform, which is basically a zip file. And after you get it downloaded to your computer, let's head to where it's located and then open the file. You'll see it has a folder called platform tools. Just find a directory on your computer where you can unzip the contents and then just drag and drop the folder there. So if you step inside the platform tools folder, you'll see that it has a tool called ADB. But for us to actually run this tool from anywhere, we need to add this location to our path. To do this, let's click on the address bar at the top and then copy the entire path. Now let's open the window start menu and search for environment. Click on edit the system environment variables after that. And then from system properties, we're going to click environment variables dot, dot, dot. You'll need to find path under the list of system variables on the bottom. We're going to be adding the path of ADB by clicking new, and then we'll paste the location of platform tools that we copied earlier. Now let's hit okay a few times here to get the changes to kick in. And at this point, we're ready to see if we can truly run ADB from anywhere. So from the windows start menu, let's search for CMD and then click on command prompt. Let's run ADB dash dash version. And you should see the full version information of ADB. And if you're not seeing this, you'll want to double check the previous step and make sure you get ADB added to your path variable correctly. Now let's switch to our Android phone because we need to turn on developer options from the app drawer. Let's head to settings and we'll want to go all the way down. Look for about phone. And if you tap that, you might see an option for software information. That's exactly what we need next. But if you're using a Google pixel, you might not have that option available, which is totally fine. And you can skip to the next step. From here, find build number and keep tapping it until you've turned on developer options. And for security purposes, you might be prompted to enter your phone pin. So once developer options has been turned on, let's go back to settings and you'll now see this option appearing at the very bottom. Let's tap developer options and we'll be looking for USB debugging. This lets us run commands on our Android using ADB from our computer. So you'll definitely want to turn this on. Next, let's plug in our Android phone to our computer using a USB cable. Once it's connected, let's start up another command prompt session from the Windows start menu. And the command we're going to be running first is ADB devices. And if you look at your phone, it's going to ask you whether you want to allow USB debugging. Before you click allow, I also recommend checking always allow to make sure that you only have to do this once. So as soon as you do that, Windows is pretty much going to ask you something very similar. So make sure you allow that here as well to let ADB 
use the port that it needs to run commands. And you'll notice that your device is now showing up from the last command that we ran. Don't worry if you see an alphanumeric name for your device. This is basically your device's serial number and that's typically how the computer recognizes it. Okay, perfect. So now that everything has been set up, let's say you wanna run an ADB command to copy a file that exists somewhere on your Android. For example, I'd like to copy this picture from my phone's download folder directly to my PC. To do this, let's first navigate to where you want this file copied to your computer. After that, click on the address bar and then run CMD to start the command prompt on this path. And the command we're gonna be running first is ADB pull, followed by the full path of the file on our Android. And optionally, you can specify what the file should be renamed to after it's copied, if you want. So once you run ADB pull, you'll see the file show up in your folder and you can access it right away. Okay, cool. But what if you wanted to do the opposite? So for example, I have an MP3 file of a podcast that I wanna transfer from my computer to my phone. And you may have guessed the command, but this time we're gonna be running ADB push because we're pushing the file to the device. And then after that, we're specifying the name of the file that we're sending, followed by where we want it transferred to on the device. So in my case, I'm transferring it to the download folder. Once you run the command, let's navigate to the folder where the file was pushed. And as you can see, the podcast is now showing up on my Android. And most importantly, it works. So now let's say you wanna transfer over an entire folder from your Android to your PC. What if I wanted to transfer all the pictures inside this photo album folder? We'll run another ADB pull command followed by the full path of that photo album on our Android. And as you can see, all the pictures were transferred over in one go. Next let's say you wanted to take a screenshot of your Android and then transfer it to your PC. For example, let's keep this browser open for us to capture the prices of these flights. The command we'll run to do this is ADB shell screen cap, followed by where we want the screenshot saved. Keep in mind that this image is actually gonna be saved on our Android. So we do have to use the ADB pull command again to transfer that screenshot over to our PC. So as you can see, we pulled the screenshot file just like we pulled all the other files earlier. And now for being able to do a screen recording on our Android phone using ADB. To tell your Android to start the screen recorder, we'll run ADB shell screen record followed by the path of where we need to save it. And then of course, the name that we wanna give the file. And just to show you what I'm recording on my Android, I'm basically just going back to the home screen, flipping through the Feedly widget, and then viewing some news articles. But anyway, when you're done, you can hit Control C to stop or kill the recording. And just like what we did with the screenshot earlier, the screen recording has been saved to the phone's internal storage or SD card. So we'll obviously need to run an ADB pull command to transfer the video over from our Android to the PC. And of course, our screen recording from before is now downloaded to the PC. Awesome. So we've covered several different ways to run Android commands from our PC. But what happens if you have multiple Android devices connected and you want to run Android ADB commands on a specific device? So for example, I've connected my Samsung phone and a Pixel phone to my computer. And if I run ADB devices, you can see that both of them are ready to receive ADB commands. For this example, I'll just create a new text file on my computer and my goal is to send this to my Samsung phone. But to do that, we need to figure out which of these serial numbers are tied to my Samsung device. We can just go to settings, about phone, 
and the serial number that starts with an R5 seems to match the second one on this list. And now let's start typing the ADB push command. But the only difference this time is that we're specifying the serial number after the dash S. That's actually how we're telling the PC which Android device to send the command to. And finally, if I go back to my downloads folder, you can now see that the text file was transferred to my Samsung phone. So I hope this helped you learn a new way to control actions on your Android using your PC. And by the way, having to connect a USB cable to run ADB commands can get pretty annoying. And that's why in the next video, I'll show you how to run ADB commands on your Android wirelessly. Thanks for watching. And for more on Android or ADB commands, please consider subscribing to this channel.